Hey everyone, I'm NitroTech, and I wanted to show you guys my pre-build existing computer, I guess I'd call it, where this is my current build, and then I'm going to take you through a three or four part video on uh, completely upgrading my build. So I wanted to start with what I'm currently using, and this is it. This is a Raid Max Viper... Uh, case uh, that's just a little razor logo I threw on there because the logo matches the Viper um, I have a few hard drives in here the bottom one would be my main that's my four terabyte I use that for everything and then the other ones I use for recording that little two and a half I pulled out of a laptop it's a 750 gig uh, I don't have anything on that yet I'm going to use that one for my recordings eventually but we have three case fans, two on the front, one on the bottom there for intake. We have another one uh, exhaust at the top. Um, this I wanted to do a positive airflow. So I have three fans pulling in and then one and a half pushing out. Uh, the other, the half is here off the CPU. You can see there's only about two or three inches there. In between that fan and then the the back exhaust so I technically use that as an exhaust but what this does is this means I'm pulling more air in through the filters and not pulling air in through the cracks and crevices which means almost there's hardly any dust in here I mean there is still some but I mean it's not much uh, nothing that would cause a problem I clean it out maybe once a year um, but other than that all the air coming in is filtered um, but let's get into the main parts here. Uh, just a OCZ Fatality 550 watt power supply. I have a gigabyte, uh, I think it was a UD3 or uh, something along those lines. Uh, the motherboard. Um, it's got 16 gigabyte of G-Skill Sniper Gaming Series 1866 megahertz RAM. And then the processor is a FX6300 AM3 Plus socket with a Intermax, I think it was an ET42, and a massive CPU heat sink with fan. And like I said, I've got the fan here uh, on a pull configuration, pulling the air from these fans up through the fins and then pushing it here to the back where it's either getting pushed out or pulled up through that fan up there. Uh, and then the GPU is just a, um, I think it was a MSI, uh, NVIDIA 750 Ti. I don't remember if it was MSI or not. Now nah, we'll look at that in a little bit. But I wanted to show you my hardware setup the cabling isn't too bad in the front in the back it's an absolute mess uh, i don't have any cable splitters for the fans you know the y splitters i have the extra cables here uh, you can kind of see back there you know, just the cables sitting there connecting everything which isn't too bad uh, looking at it from this point of view um, power supply is semi-modular it's got the main for your motherboard your 24 pin but everything else is modular so I could you know pick up the splitters and you can see the one running there extra for the hard drives but and then it does also have a little hot swappable bay just if you wanted to use you know kind of like one of those I could throw that up there and free up some space in the case but Eventually, this is all going away. I've got a complete build coming. You guys are going to enjoy it. We're going to go for a thread ripper series. Uh, it's going to be nice. It's going to. I'm going to have all kinds of fun with it and building it. And we're doing a custom water cool loop. We'll get into that. Um, but I wanted to show off, you know, just my little hardware here, what we got going, and then um, give me one second. And I'll load up uh, my computer and. Uh, we'll get uh, I'll show you 
overclocking what I'm doing. In fact, I'll show you the bios here. And of course, we've got to go with green. Just because of the Viper case, the green background. These are Cougar fans. Green LED, not RGB. But here we go. I'm going to rotate here and show you guys my overclocking on this. Um, as you can see here, we are currently at 4.4 gigahertz. Memory is 1875-1866. So we'll start with the memory. Um, and this is a six-core processor. And so we didn't mess around with the uh, uh, block timings or anything. We just did simple ratio overclocking and XMP for the memory. We got 16 gig, like I said. Uh, getting a nice uh, latency of 10 here. Now let's get into frequency. So like I said, memory, just simple XMP profile 1 gave us an 1866 megahertz. And our, let's go here into the advanced CPU so I can show you what I disabled and enabled and everything. So we set the clock ratio to 22. We disabled the performance boost. Of course we had to unlock the CPU. We disabled the cool and quiet the C1E support, uh, that we left alone. And then the core control, um, this is your, um, how many cores it uses, we just left it at automatic. Disabled the C6 state, disabled these. And then that let us set our um, clock ratio to 17 and a half, or I'm sorry, 22 which gives us a 4.4 gigahertz clock. I was able to get a stable 4.5, but then the temperature was getting too high whenever I started testing it. Uh, so that's the CPU. Um, so yeah, we didn't change anything with that, but we did go in and make sure I got that uh, voltage settings. We did set the core voltage up to 1.35. I didn't want to put too much you know, voltage boost into this because of that 550 watt power supply. We don't want to you know, drain it and cause issues. So let me get out of this and I'll meet you guys in Windows and I'll show you overclocking the GPU. Alright, here we are. And I should have started off with a disclaimer. If you change anything to your voltages, clocks, if you modify the stock settings for your hardware, you are practically voiding your warranty. So proceed with caution. Do it at your own risk. Myself, I am not responsible for any damage done due to you changing the settings of your hardware. With that said, you should always modify it in increments. I didn't mention this when I was showing you in my BIOS. You should make small changes and then use a program like Prime95 or Cinebench to test compatibility. Make sure that you know, stability, more uh, not compatibility. So with Cinebench, uh, that's the program I use to test mine. And I wanted to also show you another program. It's called Hardware Monitor. And I use this to monitor my temperatures, my speeds, my utilization, everything. So all you do is you run this. There, there's other programs out there. This is just the one I find most useful to me. So you can see here, we're running at 4.4 gigahertz, 100% usage. And you can see our temperature starting to rise. Um, I think I said 50 C is where it maxed out last time, and I can't remember. Um, I did have a recording error. I've already been through all this once already. Uh, it just didn't record. But um, it, it'll peak out at about 60 degrees, maybe 61, I think it was last time. Uh, and you can see the last time I ran this, we got a score of 934. 
So that's, yeah, it's all right for this setup. Uh, you're not going to get too much better than that, maybe a little bit, uh, depending on which core handles which frame. I think I, I just go with it. I know without it, it's a lot worse. Um, and we don't need the video card right now. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, I didn't, uh, I think I showed you the voltages when I was overclocking my CPU. I kind of did some checks on the internet, just Googled my processor and uh, voltage uh, to see kind of what everyone's max stable voltage was and went with something right around the middle, and that worked for me. Uh, so everything's stable. You know, as you can see here, we're just, it's just trucking along. This stock is 3.5 gigahertz or 3500 megahertz uh, with a boost clock of 3.8 megahertz or gigahertz or 3800 megahertz. Uh, so having this steady at 4.4 in my opinion is just awesome. And you can see here we're, we're getting close to the 60 degree uh, and usually that's about where it tops off. Now, if I had a water cooler in here, we could probably go a little bit higher. But when I hit 4.5, it was getting closer to 70. And I said, no, nah, I don't want to go that hot. So we're going to let that kind of run in the background. We'll see what score we get. Hopefully it's over 1,000. It goes back and forth between about 1,020 and 930. But some of the other uh, programs I use is, I don't know if, let's pull that kind of out of the way. Um, you can see right down here, yeah, they're still running. I use Cinebench for testing the stability of my processor. I use MSI Afterburner for overclocking my uh, video card or GPU. And then I'll use usually Heaven for testing my GPU, sometimes valid just to kind of get an idea of redundancy, I guess you can call it, just just to kind of make sure everything's good on both ends. And you can't fully test something until you actually start testing it with everything. And with that in mind, there are some uh, built-in benchmarks with certain games, you can use those too. Um, that's always a good thing. And you notice these go pretty quickly. That's because there's hardly anything there to actually process. But when you have something like this, when you're processing multiple different shades, uh, or here you've got all these lines from the bookshelf, I think that is. Um, it takes longer than just a flat wall. And that's how it bases its scores. How long did it take you to process these squares? But while that's running, let's kind of let's start getting into MSI Afterburner. Uh, right, where'd you go? Right there. Come on. No, oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this while uh, while this is running. Yeah, that's going to hurt the score. Oh well. So this may look different than others. Um, there are. You know, we'll just we'll just wait a second. Let this finish and come back to that. And I know it's not responding. It's because we are at a hundred percent workload on this. Yeah. See, we peaked at sixty-one degrees. Might hit sixty-two, but I kind of doubt it. Processing the edges. Now my resolution is a little different. Uh, I brought it down to 1600 by 900. So it's not full 1080p, but uh, it's a little bit better than 720. And for me, it makes it look okay. So we were in the process of, a, we're in the middle of an upgrade. So what did we hit that time? 891, but I loaded that, so. 
That makes sense. That was my fault. Plus, we got the recorder running. Uh, so yeah, do you know make a small change, run this, make sure it's stable. You know, keep an eye on it. Make sure all your you don't have a, a core bottom out because uh, you'll notice the utilization go down to zero, and then that core speed will drop. So just kind of watch it and make sure your temperature doesn't get too high. Uh, for this processor, 70 degrees is kind of kind of the max. You don't want to go higher than 70, but 80 is like the ceiling. If you start hitting 80 degrees, you're going to fry this processor pretty quick. Uh, it's also why I have that monster of a cooler in there. Uh, so let's minimize that for a minute. We'll close this and we'll get into this. So like I said, this looks different. Uh, if you go into settings and come all the way down here to the end to use your interface, there's different skins. And the one I liked, uh, I started out with, uh, where's the default? Uh, not that one. No. It was uh, similar to that. Uh, there's different ones in here. I like the touch of modern. I just think it's got a nice nice look to it. A couple things you might want to change is uh, when we get over here, the on-screen display and the monitoring. This is, so this box down here with the graph, sorry about that, the graph shows you, uh, if you double click on it, it pulls up all the different readings you can check. So I'm going to pull that over here for a moment. And if we go back into settings, this is where you can say, all right, show me this, show me this, show me this in the graph. And then when you select it, you can say, if it's enabled, show in the on-screen display. you see there, that popped up. But we don't, whoops, we don't want to see that. Um, and then the on-screen display, you set up how it looks um, and what, uh, you know, like here, your toggle on-screen or if you want to set up separate buttons and then you can add in uh, frame limiters and everything that's the monitoring side of it like I said it's just the graph and your on-screen display as you can see here I have a uh, right CPU temperature so this is kinda it was just kinda idle and then this is where we started the test and you see it climb 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 and this is uh, our usage nice and steady 100% and then done same with the uh, RAM you know so six gigabytes out of 16 that's about normal and then power percent this is actually for the GPU and we haven't used hardly any power yet see the temperature has been steady usage has been close to nothing uh, this is about where we started recording and then your core clock, this is our GPU clock. So we'll get into that um, actually right now. So uh, we'll get into that too. Uh, some, some general settings I like to change. Make sure this starts with Windows. And if you want to start to minimize, that's where you do it. We are going to unlock voltage control and voltage monitoring. Because that's uh, going to come up, become an important role in this. Uh, and then your updates if you need to. If you have multiple GPUs, you can select it here. And then we're going to get into the fan speed, and that's pretty much it. So, default settings almost always going to be 0, 0, 0. And then priority, like I said, this will look different uh, depending on what skin you use. The first thing we want to do when we're here at you know, default is we want to change our temp limit and our priority. So every modern, and by modern I mean past 10 years or so and newer, everything has a built-in throttle. Uh, MSI Afterburner, you're able to configure that as to what causes it to throttle. Right now the priority is at power, so when we start getting close to 100% power, it's going to automatically throttle it down. Same with temperature. When it starts getting close to 80, it'll start throttling the clock down 
to make sure it doesn't exceed that. So what we want to do is we actually want to increase that because the this GPU and most others, 80 is kind of the limit, but if we throttle it before 80, we're never hitting 80. So we don't want to throttle. So we're going to say priorities, temperature, and we want to set it to 95. Now each GPU might be different as to the max, but that's kind of what you want. You want to turn that up, maybe not as much, as high as it can, but for mine, I'm going as high as I can because I know it's never going to hit that 95. And one of the reasons is because of the fan speed, and we're going to set a big fan curve. So we have our priority at temperature, set it to 95, say, and uh, make sure we never hit 95, and it's going to start throttling at about 80 to 85. But if we're never hitting 80, then that's perfect. Whereas if it was at 80, it'll start throttling at about 60 to 70. When it starts getting up there, then it's going to say, all right, we need to start throttling. And we want to unlink this. Now what that means is if it's linked, if the power starts going, starts getting too high, then it'll also throttle. So we want to unlink it, saying only worry about the temperature. It can handle the power. Uh, mainly because this won't let you go higher than the card would allow. So, we'll get into that in a minute. So, we have that set up. We need to set up the fan. So, we're going to go into settings. Wait, first, let's apply the changes. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Priority, unlink, boom, apply. So, now let's go to the fan. We're going to enable user defined and this is how I set mine up this is a fairly steep fan curve not much of a curve there but what I have it set to is between 0 and 30 degrees run the fan at 20 percent 20 percent speed so at that point then start kicking up fan speed based on temperature and and make sure by the time you hit 50 degrees, you're at 70% speed. So as it's slowly creeping up here, we're going to quickly increase our speed. By the time we hit 60 degrees, we're at 100% fan speed. So this is why you know, we wanted to raise this up. Because if we're at 80 and it's starting to throttle at 60 to maintain the temperature, We'd rather use the fans to maintain the temperature than have it throttle our clock. So we're going to apply that. Hit OK, so make sure we're on auto. Now you see our fan speed's at 57%. So if we pull that back up, now it's at 60%. You can see we're sitting right around 47 to 48 degrees. If we pull this over here, GPU temperature 45. So that's that's about right. So we're good there. Next is actually overclocking. So again, do this at your own risk. I'm not responsible for any damage to your hardware. Um, most of the time, if it fails, it'll just reboot and go back to default. So, first thing you want to do is your memory clock. Now, this one can get pretty high, so I like to start out bumping it up in 100 point increments, or 100 megahertz. I don't know why I said point. And you see the memory clock here, as soon as we hit apply, that jumped to 2800 megahertz. Uh, and then what you do is once you bump that up, you start some kind of benchmark program. Like I said, I like using Heaven, there's Valiant also out there. A couple things is make sure your resolution is set to system and full screen is off. And what that's for is when you start it, you can bring this over and monitor uh, things like that. If you're in full screen, as soon as you tab out, you're going to lose your GPU usage because then it's just not processing anymore. 
it'll wait until that has focus again. And you see here our GPU usage is up to 99%. Our temperature is starting to climb. And our clock jumped up to 1215. So the 1071 is the base clock for this GPU. And our boost clock is 1215. Now all we've messed with is the memory. But you want to get that as high as possible first. So we're going to minimize that. I'm just going to get that out of the way. Minimize that. So that's running. Looks pretty good. It's not jumpy. Uh, let me. No, wrong one. Uh, just for testing, because I don't normally run at full 1080 at max settings, I'm just going to turn off tessellation. And that's just going to make it run a little bit smoother so that I can see any minor deficiencies. So, it looks pretty good, so we're just going to keep bumping it up and going back and forth. So we can go 200, apply, and you see that jump up to 2900. But our, oh, I'm going to turn on the uh, on screen so you guys can see. Our clock hasn't gone up yet. Because that's, like I said, we're just messing with memory. So we want to get, you know, just keep doing that until you start seeing issues or crashes or something. And then just slowly back it down by like 25 or by 10 until it's nice and stable again. Now mine, I've gotten it, uh, I my safe zone is 387 megahertz. And like I said, it's just, it, you're, you're not really going to see a difference, but there will be a difference in the, the processing of all the information. Because uh, your memory basically stores the texture until the the clock pushes it out onto the screen. So with that, now we start working with your actual core clock. Now remember for most GPUs, you're going to be messing with the boost clock, not the base. So again, small increments, you can do this one by 25. That one's not going to get that high. And apply, and now you'll see we jumped up to 1240. So our we're starting to boost the processing speed of our GPU. Now again, I'm not going to go through it, go through it all. Mine, I like it sitting at 129, and we might see a little bit of processing lag or something along those lines, a little bit of frame skipping. Uh, and that's just because that is the limit of this my specific GPU. And to kind of ease that, we're going to give it a little bit of voltage. I found 12 works perfectly for my card. So we give it a little bit of voltage so that these can actually process better. So you see now we're at 1344, 1333, going back and forth, and we're at we're at 60 60 degrees. So with that, let's show you this, and we're going to run a benchmark in the background so you guys can watch the frames per second down there. And I'm going to show you here. So our GPU temperature, so all these little, these big dips, and all these little ones up here, that is where we were tabbing back and forth between this and the other one. So um, temperature sitting nice and steady at 59. Like I said, when we hit 60, to, you know, 60 degrees, we we jump up to 100% fan speed. So we're using our fans to maintain our temperature. We don't want the, the card to throttle down the clock, which might be still happening a little bit, because you see it drops down to the 1333. But usage is nice and steady. So all these, like I said, all these are tabbing back and forth. And 
Tim down here with CPU. It's running like a champ. CPU temperature is nice and steady. So at this point, we've got a nice steady overclock of all of our components. And our FPS isn't doing that great. So here's what I want to do. I am going to cancel this one. We're going to close this and we're going to start a new one. And it may not be that great because we're also recording off of our graphics card also. So let's pull that back up. Yeah, tessellation disabled. We're on ultra quality. Everything else is just like that. We could do an extreme preset, but I know that's not going to be that good. So we'll go back to custom, tessellation disabled. Uh, no anti-aliasing. Aliasing. I don't know. Resolution system and run. You can see our GPU temperature is already back down in the 40s. And we can pull this up to show you. See, so GPU is running like it should. Well, let's pull that up down here. So 57 degrees. Fans are running at 3000 RPM. And we're sitting at 97% power to the fans. Because we're at almost 100 degrees, or 60 degrees. At 60, it's going to jump up to 100%. No, oh, it didn't register. But that's all right. So, so we're not messing with the voltage hardly at all. So it's okay. Temperature, power. That is showing how much power is going uh, to the GPU. We're sitting at 13.44 on the graphics, 30.87 on that, and we're at 100% usage. Memory's at 50%. So. All in all, looks pretty good to me. Uh, oh, I never started the actual benchmark. You see, with these settings, I can get uh, a pretty decent frames per second. Now, it's not lifelike, but it's it's it it holds its own. And we could if we pull up. Oh, I don't have it up anymore. Um, we can change what else is shown up here at the top right. You can put this over left, bottom, wherever you want it to be. There's other applications too you can use. I just like MSI Afterburner. It's a very common, commonly used program. It works. Works with both uh, AMD and NVIDIA. So you don't need, you know, it's not really specific to NVIDIA. There was one uh, AMD had, it was a Precision, Precision X. That works pretty good too, but I had problems with it. Uh, it had a hard time storing my settings and everything, so um, I just started using this one and I haven't had any problems with it. And we're averaging 56 and a half frames a second, so I like it. Looks like you guys are having a hard time. Looks like it's skipping for you guys. Now yeah, we'll see when it uh, actually finishes recording. But speaking of recording, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, the next video, we are looking at. Uh, I'm going to go through parts list, uh, what I've ordered so far, um, kind of my general idea for this build, um, and we're going all out. Uh, I have been slowly building this. Uh, it's easier to, you know, when I get a couple hundred dollars, hey, let me get the next part, instead of, you know, waiting until the end and 
saying, all right, I need to spend three thousand dollars on parts. Uh, that's not going to be that's not going to go over very well with the wife. But you know, every couple months, buy a part or two, especially like uh, Black Friday, you know, or Cyber Monday, you can get some really good deals. Um, holidays, you get some really good deals. Especially if you're looking for specific parts like I am. Um, I got I got a certain idea in mind for this. And I'm, we're actually going to build it in two steps. I'm going to use my existing case uh, for the first part. And we're going to basically build it so we can start using it. And then one, because kind of the last thing I'm going to buy is a new case. Um, so once we get everything put into this case, we'll get the new case eventually, and we'll have a video on probably about, like I said, we're doing water cooling. So about the time I need to maintenance my loop, we'll switch over to the new case. Um, that way I can do it all in one instead of, because you got to take everything apart um, and do it all at once. Uh, just a little bit easier instead of you know make, transferring everything and then having to clean the loop again or, um, or cleaning the loop and then a month later you know having to pull it apart to move it um, or vice versa I mean you probably could move no not the way I want it um, there we go we averaged 59 frames per second so that's that's good enough for me. Um, this is we maxed at 116 with a score of 1490. Not too bad. I don't know why that comes up. Well, probably because it's three core, six thread, marketed as a six core. But um, there you go. Well, like I said, next. Next step, we'll go through uh, new egg PC part list or was it PC part picker. Uh, we'll go through new egg Amazon, and I will probably at the description of this video I'll put in um, this build that I have in PC part picker, and then we'll just start doing videos of. You know, unboxing and things like that. So, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, everyone. And you know, we'll see you on the next one when we go through uh, Amazon, Newegg, PCPartPicker.com, and uh, start showing you guys what I'm looking at for this build. Uh, thanks, everyone.